last week, Fred Savage was the standout there. Sunday is International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. It's the second annual Pride Cup, so it's going to be Yarra Glen versus Warburton Millgrove at Yarra Glen. Jason Ball is the founder of the Pride Cup. Great to have you back. Good to be with you. Brock McLean is the ambassador for the game. Nice Thanks. to see you, Brock. Thanks for having me, boys. And you're going to be teammates. That's right. You've we've, recruited him? We've recruited Brock down to, down to Yarra Glen for, for a one-off. Um, hopefully it'll draw a big crowd. How much money are you paying? <laughs> um, he's doing it out of the goodness of his heart, actually. <laughs> a bit of a nicer bloke than I look, Rubber. No, no, no. Um, how successful was last year, the inaugural game? Um, uh, it, it was a big success. It was the first one. Obviously, we learnt a lot of lessons from that, but it was good to get the support of the AFL and to have Mark Evans there, the general manager mm. of operations at the AFL, to announce that the AFL would support a similar initiative at the national level was a really good way to, I guess, show how it can be done. And it's a festival of a day. It's not just football. It's netball as well. Yeah, so in the Yarra Valley Mountain District Football Netball League, it is a football netball league. All the clubs in that area are football and netball combined. Um, so, you know, not only will the players be playing in a Pride Cup in football, but the netball girls will be playing off for a Pride Cup as well. Why do you want to be involved, Brock? Well, look, for me, I've... You know, I've brought up, always brought up to believe that everyone deserves a right to be treated equally and, um, you know, having friends that are gay and then, you know, probably more recently that my sister came out and um, seeing the effect that homophobia um, had on her that made me want to get involved in, in not just this game and last year's game but, you know, in the issue in general. So I was more than happy to put my... Um, to put my hand up and, and play in it this year, although I'm, you know, I'm playing in a game the day before, so I'm not going to be uh, of much assistance. But <laughs> just to get just to get out there and be a part of it, just uh, you know, it's, just, it's going to be a very good day, I think. So you're a believer that football has a role to play here, and I mean, you've taken that on the first time, um, which was tremendously insightful, and I think it did help shape opinions. And and here you are. Well, again. definitely, you know, football is such a, a polarising thing, and so many people look up to footballs and the AFL in general, and. You've seen the great things that they've done with, you know, respecting women, you know, in the sport and also stamping out racism and that like as well. So I think the next stage from there is is eliminate or trying to eliminate homophobia and because um, it's 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 exactly the same as is racism, although it just takes on a different name. Is it is it do you feel that there's it's it's getting better? Do you feel that the, the community response to, to gay people is improving? Is it bettering? I feel that it's gotten a lot better from my club. I know that after I came out, the homophobic language around our club definitely faded. I think it became very real for my teammates that that would have an effect on me, and I was one of their mates, so why would they want to do that? And, you know, when it comes to performing well on the field, um, you know, if you look at people who are in the closet, they're significantly worse off in terms of their mental health and well-being. So there's a lot of good reasons to try and make the game more welcoming. And recent research that came out over the weekend showed that 87% of gay people who play sport feel like they have to stay in the closet to continue playing. Um, so it's either a case of people who are playing sport are in the closet or they stop playing altogether because of the homophobia that exists in sport. Um, so I guess that's what we're trying to counter with um, events like the Pride Cup. Has it improved with opposition clubs and opposition fans? Well, I was actually very surprised last year when we were playing against King Lake and an opposition player came up to me at halftime and said, um, I saw you on AFL 360 and I want to say what I think you're doing is a really good thing. Um, and that blew me away. I didn't expect that from an opposition player um, at all. And I think that the education that has happened as a result of the Pride Cup, it's, I think it's really fast-tracked the maturity of the playing group at Yarra Glen and also um, around our league. So I think it is a template that the AFL could draw upon of how this, tackle, uh, this issue can be tackled at a grassroots level. Can I ask you a question? I see you as an ambassador. I see you marching at St Kilda. I knew you were an ambassador for this game and your links to the AFL. Have you had AFL players or an AFL player come up and talk to you about his sexuality? No. No. Would so, you have, I mean, oh, clearly look, you'd respond. If, 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 you know, someone was out there hiding their sexuality and they felt like they were comfortable enough, you know, to come and talk to me, by all means, give yeah. me a call, get on the email. And that's just not any AFL football. If there's a, a local footballer out there and it doesn't have to be a footballer, it can be anyone in general. The more help and support that we can provide these people to be able to make them feel comfortable enough to talk about the issue and talk about their sexuality and make them feel comfortable enough to maybe want to come out, then by all means it makes them a better person. Last one I want to ask you about this. Everyone knows Brock McLean, the footballer. Do you think, I see you're very passionate about this subject, do you think at some stage of your life that people will say, oh, there's Brock McLean, he's that terrific ambassador for, uh, you know, 
for, 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 for gay people, or they'll say, oh, there's Brock McLean, he's the former Carlton and Melbourne player. I'd, I'd like to think... I'd love, to, love for it to be the former. Um, I think... As a human being, you get so much more joy and so much more um, pride in yourself than helping other people. And um, myself and Jason, we're working through at the moment. In, I'm an ambassador for Athlete Ally, and we're trying to set up a bit more of a framework here in Australia and a bit more of a presence here in Australia, so that uh, the athlete, athlete Ally ba brand and banner can be seen a lot more here. And um, hopefully, we can start getting out there and um, doing a bit more public talking and, and, and getting the issue out there a lot more. Hope your knees hold together. <laughs> yes. I hope it's a great uh, day. The very best of luck with it. It's thanks, a tremendous boys. initiative. May you all, all strength to you in year two. The Pride Cup on Sunday in Yarra Glen. Tomorrow night on AFL 360, King and McClure. There's plenty to dissect. I don't suspect Sellers' mood will have improved that much. And then the Bomber Diaries. I'm pretty sure Robbo's just going to make him the Essendon coach for the night and hammer away. And hammer away. And away. Uh -huh.